Hey guys, welcome back to my kitchen and welcome back to another cooking video. So today I have a bunch of snack ideas. A few months ago I actually had done a video very similar to this, so I will leave the link below because that will give you even more snack ideas. And you guys really seem to enjoy this style video. I know that I'm always looking for homemade snacks that I can make my three little girls and just things that can be prepared and sitting either in the pantry, in the freezer, or in the refrigerator. In case you're completely new here, you can go ahead and click to any recipe that is in this video by hitting the timestamp under the recipe in the description box. That's where all of the instructions and ingredients are listed. Also, there are links there where you can pin any of these recipes individually so that you can find them later or organize them in your Pinterest board. And if you are new around here, I would love it if you subscribed, joined my channel for lots of recipe and meal prep and meal planning inspiration. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Pinterest if you don't already and let's go ahead and get started into these recipes all right so the first thing that I got started on was some Italian hoagie inspired cucumber bites or sliders or sandwiches whatever you want to call them so I love the flavor of Italian hoagies I think it's so delicious and all of the different styles of meats that go with them so i got a few different ones that i thought would taste good with this and i went ahead and mixed up a cream cheese mayo spread that i layered in with the cheese and the meat and then put it all together You could slice the cucumber as thin or as thick as you prefer. I went for a little bit of a thinner slice and it just had such a great crunch. Once I had these assembled, I just put them all into a large container and stored them in the refrigerator. And actually, the longer that they stayed in the refrigerator, the better the flavors combined. And I'm probably gonna be making these again. They were so delicious. Next, I wanted to try and make some chia pudding. It's been a while since I've made this and I used to make it very regularly and I just, I don't know, this week I was in the mood for it and I also wanted to make something that my girls would enjoy as well just as a really healthy snack. So the first version that you'll see here and I listed them separately in the description box is the dairy version. So this one is made with heavy cream and raspberries. I did have a taste of it. I don't normally eat heavy cream, but this was so delicious. It definitely had the like berries and cream flavors and really made a really creamy consistency compared to the dairy free version. Oh. 
you could make this in your blender or if you have a submergible blender like I do, it makes cleanup super simple, but I have made chia pudding in the blender before and it works well either way. This is the dairy-free version and I used some almond milk and some blueberries and whenever you're melting the fruit down, the blueberries stay about the same size, but the raspberries do melt down and as you saw in the first couple clips there, it, I actually ended up filling up my measuring cup twice and then I microwaved them since they were frozen. You could totally use fresh as well. And either way, I think the flavors are there and it tastes delicious. In the dairy-free version, I did add some protein powder. You could use whatever protein powder you like. I will let you know how many ounces I used in the description box. I wanted to make a trail mix or a party mix, whatever you want to call it, um, this week. Just kind of a salty snack to have around. So I came up with this combination and it turned out so delicious. Since it was a pretty good sized batch, I actually shared some with my mom as well and she really enjoyed it too. It just was a great salty, um, gluten free, friendly, healthy alternative to a Chex Mix and it's just super savory. So I put pecans and some almonds and I did make sure that both of those were kind of raw or at least the almonds were raw and neither of them had salt added to them. Once you have your sauce all mixed up here, I put about two thirds of the sauce into the nut mixture and stirred it all together and then I put that in the oven first the temperature is listed below and the time frame for how long you want to put these in the oven but i knew that the nuts would need to be in longer than my other ingredients After the nuts had been roasted for a while, I put them back into the bowl that I had mixed everything in. I added in my cheddar cheese um, crisps and then also added in some pork rinds. And I did go ahead and break them up into smaller bite-sized pieces just to kind of match the size of the other things in the mixture. Once everything was mixed together, I did put it back in the oven for a while and then pulled it out and let it cool. And I think I am going to store half of this in the freezer just so it doesn't go stale, just because um, it did make a pretty good amount. But other than that, it's a great thing to have in your pantry to just grab quick and go and does have a good amount of protein in it as well. Okay, so this recipe is one that I have wanted to figure out for quite a while, and that is a marshmallow-free 
Rice Krispie. And this actually turned out really good. My daughters loved this recipe. And the first thing that I did is I took a cup of peanut butter and I put it in the microwave for about a minute, just kind of getting it somewhat melted so it was easy to stir in with the other ingredients. I wanted to add something besides Rice Krispies, so I got some unsweetened coconut flakes and mixed it right in. And to be honest, I think it actually helped to make the texture even more desirable than just with Rice Krispies. I don't know, something about having that extra flakiness in there just really made it good. The key to these holding together is they do have to be refrigerated. If you leave them out on the counter, they will get really, really soft and a lot harder to eat in a bar form. So you have to store them in there, but other than that, they were a great hit. If you guys have watched my channel for a while, you know how much I love making homemade gummies and gummy candy. So this time I decided to try out my True Lemon Strawberry Lemonade to make some strawberry lemonade gummies. And these look a little bit more like gumdrops with the mold that I used, but this worked out perfectly. And the packet mixture is for obviously making lemonade. Each packet is for a 16 ounce drink. And instead of 16 ounces, I just used eight ounces of water like I said, all of the instructions will be listed below, but I didn't have to add any sweeteners or anything else. I just strictly used the drink packet mixture and it worked out well. And you can purchase these on Amazon if you can't find them in your store. That is all the recipes I have for today. I hope that this inspired you. Let me know in the comments which recipe you liked the best. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Give this video a like and I will see you guys in my next video.